Hey everyone, it's Eric with FirearmTutorials.com and today we're going to look at cleaning the bolt on the USC UMP conversion here. This gun is dirtier than Miley Cyrus, so I figured I'd take advantage of that and um, show you guys how to clean the bolt. One of my viewers said that in the last video I had about cleaning this, I didn't really go into anything about the bolt, which is true, so I wanted to go ahead and cover that today. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to show you the um, strip of this how to get the actual bolt out of the bolt carrier and basically the areas that you should clean on this and how to do it. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bolt. Okay, so here's a look at the bolt assembly um, from a USC. You see here we've got the recoil rod. This will need to be cleaned. Um, it doesn't really get that dirty, um, but the carrier here is going to get lots of carbon buildup on it, especially if you've been shooting it suppressed. So I've been probably shoot, I probably shoot this gun suppressed about 90% of the time, and I don't think I've cleaned this in about 500 rounds, so it's got a good amount of uh, carbon buildup on it. So we'll go ahead and clean it up. I'm just gonna use a couple different things. I'm gonna start with just a Hilco lube wipe, which you've seen in some of my other videos. Kinda just is an easy way to get the stuff off the surface, get the material nice and wet so we can loosen up any uh, carbon that's on there. You see how dirty this is already. But I like to just cover most of this carrier and then I'll go ahead and take out the bolt. So, I mean, compared to an AR-15, this is actually pretty easy to clean. It's a lot of 90 degree angles, a lot of flat surfaces, so it's pretty easy to just rub down or use a brush on. Now, this is the part that's really going to have a lot of carbon because the blowback gas is going to uh, just throw all the extra carbon down into the uh, into all these little ridges, all these little channels. This is actually the forward assist for anybody who is wondering. Doesn't work as well, or I guess I should say it's not as easy to use as it is on like an AR where you have a little uh, button on the outside of the receiver, but it still gets the job done. Now this is one of the parts that's gonna get the dirtiest right here is this little area right in here. So you see here's a clean part of the wipe. I'll just wipe this down. You see how dirty that got. So I think I've got most of the stuff off the surface. I'll go ahead and break the carrier down, take the bolt out, and then I'll give it a final scrub with uh, a brush and maybe some nitrous solvent. So to take this guy down, this is what we're gonna do here. There's a retaining pin right here. This will get pretty dirty too. But we're gonna have to pull that out. Now this little arm here uh, keeps the bolt under tension. So it's a two part process. We're gonna have to move this over. We're gonna put our finger over this because once I move this over and pull this out, it's gonna be under some tension here because there is a firing pin spring and we don't want this to go flying across the room. So like I said, I'm gonna move it here. I'm gonna push this down a little bit, pull this out. You hear a little bit of snap there. There it comes. Okay. Now notice the firing pin spring, sometimes it comes out on the firing pin, sometimes it's just laying in that little channel. But this is basically what you're looking at with the uh, bolt and firing pin. Now, I usually don't take this, you can take this apart, there's a couple different pieces inside here. But you should notice that the orientation here is very important. And there's about six different ways that you can put this back together but only one way that it will actually function in the rifle. So unless this thing is really nasty dirty, I just leave it the way it is, just wipe it off. Um, 
because I haven't done it enough times to be uh, good at doing it, but I'm just going to go ahead and clean this part of it. So now I'm just going to wipe this down, clean any stuff off the firing pin here. Be careful not to uh, disassemble this while you're cleaning it. There you go, it's nice and shiny now. So here's something to notice is you see this little notch here. This is the part that we're actually going to engage when we reinsert this retaining pin. So that's important to notice. Um, let's go ahead and clean this out. I'm gonna try and wedge this in there. See if I can clean that little crevice. And let's go ahead and spray this thing, put this off to the side. Let's go ahead and spray this. Some good old nitro solvent. Which I'm almost out of. Here's another area that is prone to collecting a lot of carbon, this little ridge right under the bolt face. And you can tell how dirty this is. The brush looks dirty and the uh, consistency of this bolt face looks like mud it is pretty nasty. Now, I don't know exactly what kind of finish this carrier has, but um, I didn't want to use anything like a wire brush just in case it removed any of the uh, protective coating or any of the finish off of this because I uh, can't find my brass brush for some reason. Okay. So we did a pretty good job. There's still some, I'm gonna hit this again. So there is just a good buildup of carbon right in that little section there. See, I'm getting my gun vise dirty too. Jeez, every time I shoot this gun suppressed a lot, I forget how extra dirty it gets. I think the rule of thumb I've figured out is that these guns get at least two times as dirty when you shoot them suppressed. I'd say even more than that. Okay, so here's kind of the last part of the cleaning that we're going to do here. So I sprayed some nitro solvent down in here. So right in this little groove, I'm just going to use a Q-tip to kind of get some carbon out of this area that I couldn't reach with a brush. And then I'm going to run a couple down inside here. kind of clean out this little area where the firing pin goes because yeah it's, it does get a good amount of stuff in there and I'm going to do the same thing where the recoil rod goes
spray this down one more time. Once I clean this out, I'm going to just put a little bit of oil down in there. Kind of keep the uh, firing pin, the bolt operating freely. It's not necessarily needed, but just something I like to do. Okay, let's go ahead and hit this. This shouldn't be too bad here. There's no big chunks of anything, no buildup really, just uh, kind of want to go through, clean up the edges here. Okay, try and dry this out, dry this little channel out here, and then I'll put a little bit of oil in it, and then we'll be ready to reassemble the bolt and then go from there. There we go. All right, so that's about it. You see we've got a little bit of oil there. And let's go ahead and proceed with the rest of the assembly. Okay, so here are our steps for reassembly. We want to go ahead and put the firing pin spring back down in here. Now notice where the spring is going. It needs to go down in that little channel. You don't want it to follow along here, which it will if you're not careful. So you see it's down in there. Now when we put the firing pin back in here, obviously we want to put the firing pin through the spring like so. You see it in there. Now there's two steps to get this back in place. You see this notch on the side here, which has to line up with that. So we're going to go ahead and push that straight through. You got to move this out of the way and push, oops, push it straight through. There, once, once you've got it lined up, it goes in pretty easily. So now what we need to do is, you see this little notch here that I was talking about before, and that is for the retaining pin, which has wandered all the way over here. So what we're gonna need to do is move this out of the way. We're gonna push the bolt all the way in, and we're gonna have to actually push it in a fair amount to make enough room. There, you can, you can see it there. There's enough daylight in there that it'll slip right in, like so. If you're trying to put it in, you're trying to put it in and it won't go in, it's just because you don't have this pushed in enough. So just make sure that you push that in and now it's uh, under tension and it's held in place. And go ahead and reassemble the rest of the weapon. I usually just spray this recoil rod down. Like I said, it doesn't get too dirty anyways. And uh, we'll be back in business. Okay, so here it is fully reassembled. Much better. This thing was running pretty dry before. There was just so much carbon built up in there. Not that it really affected the functioning of the weapon, just I can feel it's operating a little smoother. So that's it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.